Today I have something special for you guys. In front of me is a box containing my brand new Nikon 35Ti. So instead of building any more suspense, let's just get into it. So it's obvious that I've already taken this box out of the original shipping container just to make things a little bit faster. But if you couldn't tell, there's actually still saran wrap on this box that the seller shipped it in. So let's just try and take this wrapping off wherever it starts. And upon opening, we have the white outer covering of the Nikon 35 box with the Nikon 35 branding under ports date. Pulling off this white covering, we have a black faux leather box. And it should be noted that this is actually the first time that I've ever seen the Nikon 35 being shipped like this. Usually it just comes in a little box about the size of the carrying case that's actually inside that we'll see in a little bit. Opening up the box, we get all the paperwork. Let's see, registration, the manual, and just various little paperwork showing you how to insert the battery and whatnot. Put it that side, let's get to the main compartment. Whew. There it is. We have the carrying case, a box of film, Kodak Gold 400, 12 exposures. Gets me going for so long, and this one's actually expired in uh, July of 1999. So we're just going to put that back. I'm just going to keep this for memory's sake. Uh, let's see, in here, the battery's not in there. So let's just put that back. And let's pull out the camera. Oh, and that is it. It's a little bit dusty, but that just all wipes off. I mean, this camera has been sitting for quite some time. So like I said in the beginning, this is actually a new 35Ti, new old stock, meaning that although it's an old camera, it actually has not been used. So in that sense, it's actually brand new. Unfortunately, this camera did not come with any batteries and I just had to go out and pick some up. If you're interested, they use the CR123 batteries and these are relatively expensive if you consider it per unit. The energizers at the store, it was 11 bucks for two of them. Luckily, they had this knockoff brand, was two for five dollars. The Nikon 35Ti was first introduced in 1993 and it's the most premium 35mm film point and shoot that Nikon has ever made. The 35Ti moniker refers to the fact that this camera has a 35mm lens and is constructed from titanium, a material that many manufacturers used in their high-end cameras at the time. Perhaps the most defining feature that this camera has is the analog display on the top plate. This display is used to indicate the aperture, focus distance, film counter, exposure compensation, long time exposure, self timer, and film rewind. To the right of the analog display is the shutter release along with the mode indicator. This camera can be used in program, aperture priority, and long time exposure mode. This camera also features an adjustment dial which adjusts various settings of the camera depending on what mode you want to adjust. To the left of the analog display are buttons that let you manually choose the focusing distance and exposure compensation. The center button doubles as the self timer activator and analog display and viewfinder illuminator. Below the viewfinder light gathering window is an LCD screen which displays the time or frame counter. On the front are two buttons. The top one allows you to force the flash to fire and the bottom allows you to force the flash to not fire. It should be noted that later versions of the 35Ti actually has a slider instead of two buttons to adjust the flash. This is actually a design taken from the Nikon 28Ti, a camera that released in 1994 following the 35Ti. The back of the top plate features the mode and set buttons which allow you to adjust the time, date, and various custom functions of the camera. If needed, this camera does offer a mid-roll rewind button located on the bottom of the camera. The Nikon 35Ti actually features Nikon's matrix metering, which was very advanced at the time, especially for a film point and shoot. An interesting feature that this camera actually has is a panorama mode, which essentially is a fake panorama, because all it really does is crop your regular 35mm film down to give it a more wide look. And that, in a nutshell, is the Nikon 35Ti, and this video is by no means an in-depth review, but more of an overview and really just my thoughts on this camera and why I bought it. If you're interested, I actually won this camera at auction on eBay for around 500 bucks. I did a lot of research on this camera and really read the market 
prior to buying this camera and the price a lot of people seem to be saying that it's around 300 bucks to 600 bucks for a really good condition 35 ti but currently that is really not the case and i advise you to really look at prices before you start buying a 35 ti or really any old film cameras as the price really changes with the market right now it seems like there is a resurgence of interest in film and these premium point and shoots so the price has skyrocketed way up really on the 35 ti the 28 ti the rico gr1s the t2 the t3s really everything has gone way up in price that being said you can find a nikon 35 ti around 300 bucks it, that's really easy but they are very beat up in my opinion if you wanted to pick up a new 35 Ti as of the time of this video, it is about $1,000. And some people even charge $2,000, but that is way out of line. Do not spend more than $1,000 on a new 35 Ti. And if you're fine with a little bit of scratches and stuff like that, like I said, they go way down to $300. If you are interested in buying one of these cameras, there are a few things to look out for. Firstly, if you look on the back of the camera, there is actually a little eye cup. And this is the diopter adjuster, if you want to call it that, because it does give you a little bit of a magnification boost. But it seems like a lot of sellers sell their cameras without this feature, just because um, apparently it pops off fairly easily, so people lose it. So a lot of sellers somewhere along the lines just lose it and sell it without it so if you're interested in that definitely be on the lookout for it i really wanted this because i felt that without it it just made the camera look a little bit uglier i guess just aesthetically so i was really happy that my camera actually came with it another thing to consider is the actual condition of the camera in terms of scratches and everything cosmetically a lot of seller would try to list their listing as this is the thing about buying used film cameras especially the ones from japan where most of them come from it, it, every seller seems to give you conditions like near mint 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 plus 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 just the most random rating scale but if you actually look at the pictures even the the ones that they claim is like near mint which you consider is like practically brand new um they really show a lot of wear on the titanium finish um of course some of them have scratches but we're not talking about that stuff just because that's that's very easily determined or very easily viewed i'm talking about the actual titanium finish on the camera this champagne color actually from what i've seen does not wear very well and it seems like where people actually use it and touch the camera like this little arm rest or finger rest and just around the general like buttons and everything um if you look at it the finish actually looks like it's actually wearing off and that's just a sign of age and use and that should be something that you look out for especially when these sellers are giving you outrageous cosmetic ratings and telling you that it's near perfect and everything like that Besides those two things, there seems to be a lot of 35 Ti's on the resale market that are, are in fairly good condition. And like I said, you can pick one up for around 300 bucks. And if you don't care about the cosmetics, man, I think 300 bucks is a great deal considering what you're getting in this premium point and shoot from the matrix medium, this crazy analog dial, and just the little features and quirks of this camera. I think that's why I was really attracted to this camera. Just it's so different when i first started looking at premium point and shoot this was the one that really stood out in my eye and it was really because of this analog dial and really it, it's this this camera to me is the only one that really you know has some character every other camera really just looks like a point and shoot you know like it looks like a gr1 looks like a, a contax t2 t3 just because I mean, on the market, that's what you, you're trying to go after because they kind of, those cameras own the market. So, I mean, the 35 Ti, don't get me wrong, it's just a little square block and it looks like the T3 <laughs> essentially. But this is where everything changes, this top plate, man. This is so iconic and it really makes this camera. It makes it so much different than anything else and this, that, that's essentially why I went with the 35 Ti. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, share, comment down below with your thoughts on the 35 Ti, or just tell me what film camera you're using right now. Don't forget to follow me on all my social media, and definitely subscribe to this channel because I will be taking this camera on the street, using it, and showing you guys what that's like. So until next time, see ya.